Good evening, or morning, I suppose. Um, I don't know when you're watching this. So, uh, this is going to be a challenge, a coding challenge, where I'm going to try to add trees to this voxel terrain. So it's like a Minecraft terrain, which I've shown you how to do in previous um, videos, if you're interested. There we go. Sorry, I was just uh, sorting out my screen there. Right, okay, let's get to the code. So, if I start the timer now... Is that how I, st I can't even start a timer, let alone program trees. Okay, 15 minutes is on the clock. And I'll stop at exactly 15, right. Um, so, what we've got so far in this um, in this Unity scene is just a player controller. Uh, we've got the sun. And I've got what I've called voxel farms, which you'll be very familiar with if you've seen my other uh, tutorials. These are just like grids that will appear and they generate Perlin terrain. So uh, what I've got to work with is this simple voxel farm um, C sharp file script and I'm going to aim to generate some trees somehow. So I haven't actually worked out how, how I'm going to do this. Um, so what we should do is something like every time we place down a block we could randomize whether we're going to try to like algorithmically build a tree and what will that involve that'll involve maybe we could like just create voxels so a block a cube and then have a loop that just generates a few in the air so we try and make poles <laughs> basically let's try and do that so um in my generate terrain function this is probably probably where we're gonna want to do this. I've just fiddled around with this code maybe a week ago with, with adding seed features and things. Um, get seed running terrain. Um, okay, yeah, I think it's just in generate terrain. That's where we'll do it. So, um, what's basically happening in this function is I've got a hundred columns and a hundred rows and that's the voxels or squares and then I've got a nested loop, so I'm going to over all the columns and over all the rows like this. And um, so I'm using that grid system to determine the, the X and the Z location of the cube. And then I'm using some Perlin noise to work out the, the height of the block. Um, and I'm adding a, the seed number in there again. Look to previous videos if you want to work out, if you want to learn more slowly how this is working. This is not really a tutorial video, I'm just kind of making stuff up as I go along. Um, but hopefully it'll be fun because I'll, I'll, I'll make some mistakes. And, and, and often that's the best way to learn some things. Um, okay, so down here is where I'm actually instantiating, that means loading a, a block or a, a, um, a prefab from my assets folder into the into the game scene. So once I've placed down a block, I could use its location to like generate a tree. So let's let's um, let's see if underneath here, underneath here, um, we'll say. Um, now decide to uh, uh, whether we're not always going to cr uh, create a tree. Uh, decide whether to create a tree. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Um, let's write a little random function. If um, math f so math f random <laughs> nope. <laughs> I've been programming too much JavaScript. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, oh, I think Unity's got a built-in random. There we go. Random. Uh, range. Random value. What does that give me? Returns a random number between 0 and 1. Perfect. That's what I need. So, a random value. Um, scale it up to 100. There we go. So, we can say... So we've got like a hundred percent. It's not liking that. F. 
Anyway, well, I don't know. Let's see what's going on. Right. Um, random value times 100. Um, if that's greater than, let's say, if it's greater than 90%, so 10% of the time, or it'll be easier if I say, if it's less than 10, 10% so of the time, then grow a tree. Okay. Why Why is that wrong? What's going on? Error. Unity Engine Rant does not contain a definition for value. <laughs> why was it suggested to me? Is that right? No. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I thought it was a function. Anyway, um, so to grow a tree, we're going to say new block. No, we're not. We were going, we're going to say uh, game object instantiate and can I just say can I say game object primitive yes create primitive ah I can just say that game object create primitive and primitive type cube there we go this is basically unity uh, programming this or mono developer there we go so that would create a a primitive presumably at zero 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 um, so we haven't fed her any other numbers so we want to be able to grab this object so to do that we need to um, we need to give it a variable create a variable in which to store temporarily this uh, new primitive uh, this new cube uh, so which, uh, we'll call this tree tree babe so our tree babe will be that okay let's just I'm unused to my font being so large. There we go. So I'll create a new line so that you can see everything. So how long have we got left? Eight minutes. My goodness, how long does that mean? I mean like five plus two. Seven minutes of being nonsensing around. Okay. Okay, so ah now we want to position our tree. Let's grab this code, which generates the the voxel part of the terrain, a cube, and we want to say uh, tree babe transform you to this position, so the same position as the part of the, the terrain uh, that we're currently dealing with in the array, uh, not in the array, the, the nested loops, and we want to just position him one above the terrain and in fact what we'll do we'll put it five above the terrain just to see be able to see it a bit more clearly okay so we should have like these white blocks if this code works at all around the terrain um, that won't count as a tree so I won't have completed the challenge um, if this works will it run okay it looks like it's gonna run Okay, I don't see any trees. <laughs> I don't see any blocks. Oh, I think I know why. I think I know why. I've been fiddling around with this uh, script, as I said. And if I fall off the edge, you'll be able to see what I've done. Aha, and you can see the trees. Did you see them in the middle there? Okay, so what I've actually done is... Uh, some people were talking about having... Um, other layers of voxels when you dig down so it's like Minecraft and I was just playing around with different methods of doing that and what I've done instead of placing a, a single block um, a, a grid of single blocks um, I've created like towers so it's it's now like a more three-dimensional thick uh, kind of terrain so I have to oh my goodness I have to work out how big the, the block is that we're building on. Oh, I've made things way more complicated now. Okay, um, so Y plus, let's see if I can just get hold of, what's it called, new block. So 
if I say plus um, new block, you know what, just to keep it tidy, I'll say plus adjust. And I'll say um, float adjust equals, so it wants to equal the new blocks, um, maybe half the, half the, the Y, what do you call it, scale of this block, okay, adjust equals, oh my god, I didn't copy and paste it, anyway, new block dot trans transform um, scale, uh, I think I want a local scale, is that right? And just the y dimension um, divided by 2. Okay. So, what should essentially happen is our tree babe, our tree babe, babe block, should uh, be generated kind of in the middle of the world and then. I'm adjusting it up by half its position, and then I'm adding on five. Okay, so we should have, a look, I guess, like mushrooms. Like, like floating white mushrooms, if it works. Dotted around. Oh, wonderful, we've got some, <laughs> we've got somewhere. Okay, so 10% of the time, does that look like 10% of the time? It's quite a nice way to visualise percentages, I guess. Um, or like low-flying clouds. Okay, right. So we need maybe 3% of the time to begin with. And I've got about 3 minutes, 3 and a half minutes. Okay, um, so let's move that percentage down. 3% of the time we'll have trees. And... Right. Um... I wanted a loop to make several of them. I'm going to cheat now. Okay, I'm going to cheat. And I'm just going to make a pole. So I could just say... Um, I need to... I need to make this new primitive stretch up. And I don't think I can just... Um, get hold of its uh, I don't think I can just get hold of its Y component and stretch it um, so equals I don't know 12 high or we could do another random number couldn't we we could say the tree is uh, random So I'm just sorting out my uh, spacing so you can see. We could say it's random value, scale that up to, it could be a maximum of, I don't know, 24 meters high or 24 units high. Um, and there we go. Now, I don't think that will work because usually Unity doesn't like you fiddling around with each of these components. No. So I'll say something like modify the value by creating a temporary variable. So, <laughs> we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to say um, vector3 um, temporary tree scale equals tree babe uh, dot transform dot uh, local scale. Okay. Now we can fiddle around with TT. So we can say TT dot Y equals this. Okay. Now we can say um, tree babe's whole local scale vector. So that's its local scale X, Y, and Z components. We can say all of those equal TT, and that should work. Okay, so that's how to get around changing single components in a vector three, which is what Unity uses to store its position. Um, oh no, <laughs> what's gone on there? Cannot modify 
local scale. Have I not saved it? Um, oh, there we go. We're not. Conv we're not. Again, that would just repeat the previous problem. We want the whole vector three here to be changed, and I've got what fifteen seconds. If these look vaguely like tree poles. Okay, they vaguely look like trees. Um, again, oh, that was a nasty sound. I don't know if you heard that, but there we go. 15 minutes is up. Pause that. Right. I think I think I'm allowed to count that as a as a win. <laughs> um. As a challenge complete, so you get the idea. This is how you might introduce uh, trees into your voxel landscape. Um, an easier way of maybe doing it is to build a prefab tree and then instantiate that in. So, looking back at the code um, here, I've said instantiate current block type and what I've done is if we go to this uh, if we go to a voxel farm and it's the host of the the the, the simple voxel farm script um, block types so you could create variables that hold game objects and Here's my here are my prefabs, and I've just loaded those into the uh, the corresponding um, game object variable slots, and so you could build a tree, create a prefab, and load those into a, an equivalent slot. Um, that might be a nicer way to do it, um, but it is nice to algorithmically sometimes generate things. Okay, there we go. Um, I think challenge kind of successful, and um, we got there in the end. A few nice bugs. Thank you very much.